Now, in London, we might be a long way from the Mississippi Delta, but as it turns out, the blues came closer than you might think. And this is a short film that I made with my friend Dennis about when Freddie King came to London. <laughs> I'm Dennis Roberts, I'm a local lad, grew up in South East London and uh, a bit of a music fanatic from the start and we're in the Black Prince Bexley here which used to be one of the local venues for music and a fine history too. <laughs> This is part of the original building when it was built by Charrington's as a hotel and a, um, a, a lounge venue. Um, I used to frequent this uh, establishment like many, many others over the years and certainly through the 60s and 70s there was a host of really big names who came and played here. The, the great and the good of British R&B, so um, Gino Washington and the Ram Jam Band, Soup Money and his big roll band, um, we've had uh, Georgie Fame and the Blue Flames, um, Cream, uh, John Mayall and his Blues Breakers, uh, Fleetwood Mac, um, and amongst some of the visiting um, American names, um, actually I was surprised at how many were uh, through the doors here. Solomon Burke, T-Bone Walker, Howling Wolf, um, uh, all sorts of uh, folks have played here. John Lee Hooker um, and latterly uh, Freddie King, which is uh, one of my favourite experiences here and interestingly whilst the other American visitors generally only played here once Freddie King played here three times um, and uh, on one occasion um, uh, I actually got with his permission to record the set here <laughs> archives there is a recording of Freddie King live at the Black Prince in Bexley and it's a great show I can tell you <laughs> about your personal involvement with Freddie King? Well, um, it, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, a good school chum of mine, Lou Martin, was an outstanding pianist. And in our school days, uh, I used to play a bit of guitar and we, we got together. He went on um, to join a blues band called Killing Floor, who got the job of uh, accompanying Freddie King on two of his UK tours and uh, because they were um, young lads then as we as we were um, not much money they asked me uh, if I'd go along as their uh, roadie and do the driving and the humping and that um, and there it was only for expenses, but what a great time I had. And Freddie was, um, above all, a gentleman. He, he didn't mind who you were as long as he could get on with you, and he got on with most people. And he, for some reason, he, he did take to me. And we used to have, um, when Killing Floor were on stage, um, We'd have little sessions, Freddie and I, in the, um, at the band room before he went on and he'd play me things that you probably wouldn't expect of someone um, of his background and stature. So he would play all sorts of pop songs, a bit of Motown here, um, uh, m m maybe a, a poppy type of song and he'd pick out a bluesy style to play that song in. What do you remember of Freddie King's appearance here? Which, which year was it? 
Um, uh, he did two here that uh, uh, I was present for. He did the 1st of June 1969, I think, and then he returned here in November of 69 uh, for another gig, and that was the one that um, I recorded. Um, but both of them, I have to say, I remember for the place being packed out um, and there were people coming here because this was one of the few Lon out of London gigs that he did in that was accessible to people around London. Um, and the place was packed and heaving um, and Freddie just loved that. He, he would come out and uh, I remember on the night um, he was uh, playing with the audience at one stage in between songs and showed them his um, Red Gibson guitar and he said, um, I've got a name for her, um, do you want to know what, it's, what I call her? And someone shouted out from the audience, Rachel. And he said, you go back too far because that was what he used to call his guitar, he now called it My Baby. Um, and he was really charmed by how people knew so much about him and his music. And on the night, uh, and I'm really glad uh, that he let me record it, he actually opened the set um, with uh, a B.B. King song that I have never heard him sing before. He's never recorded it. Um, and he kicked off with that for some reason. He used to usually play CC Baby, one of his tunes to open up, a nice swing shuffle. Um, uh, so I've captured that and um, uh, I, I loved that moment. There were, perhaps when you saw him every night, you notice the small differences rather than the commonality. But um, he was a lovely fella um, and once chided me when I could, we were on a gig and he'd um, broken a string um, and he'd previously chided me because I used for my guitar very lightweight strings and he used very heavy ones. I saw he'd broken the string and I got a new one from his guitar case, handed it to him from the front of the stage and he looked at me and growled and he said, is this one of mine or one of yours? Um, uh, and we laughed about that bit of a, uh, an in-joke. Um, and uh, I have to say he came back twice for an encore here on the last occasion he played here and the place erupted. It was just superb. And I could tell when he came off stage, he was buzzing. So that's my memory, Freddie King at the Black Prince. Dennis, what happened to Freddie's uh, Gibson guitar? Well, he did love that guitar, but he used to play with uh, metal picks, finger picks, because he, he actually did finger picking style and uh, an amazing style to watch for 
a, a rock blues artist to use that in many of his um, songs and tunes. But on his last night, um, he offered uh, Mick Clark, the lead guitarist of Killing Floor, his Red Gibson, um, and Mick bought it. And I can remember to this day, he bought it for £60 um, and found some time afterwards that he couldn't get on with it. Um, he'd restrung it and everything. And I'd said to Freddie, well, you're going back to a concert. You're going straight back to America for a concert. Um, what are you going to play? And he said, Otis Rush is on the bill he'll lend me his guitar and I suspect that's just what happened. This is a very different building today as to as to the late 60s right? Um, uh, it is because we're sitting in part of the new extension of the uh, the old buildings but the old buildings are still here and what was the function room is now a conference suite here and um, I've just had a look round and some of the original fittings and windows are still here and the doors through which so many people entered this venue are still there and you can still use them and they are regularly used by the staff here and um, this is still, each time I drive by on the A2 and look at the black prints, I think of all those nights I spent here, and many other people did, um, uh, enjoying a, a wide range of music. Um, and those were memorable days. And I have just met someone on staff here who tells me his granddad and grandma actually came to the gigs here, met and then married. Now there's a, a whole two, three generations of people who have a, a deep affection for the place. And I'm glad to see that it's still being used for its purpose. And when they, they met and married, was that all in the same evening? Um, <laughs> I suspect not. <laughs> Oh, my God. 